I hope to keep this video pretty brief, uh, but I've said that before. Um, so we'll see how it goes. One of the things that has always bothered me about Zoya is that I, I just never could figure out how to do swung rhythms. Um, and so I uh, started experimenting and I came up with a way that I think works pretty well. Um, so I'll demonstrate it really quickly. This is just a, a noise module uh, going into a, a VCA and it's uh, controlled by a, a very simple decay envelope um, to get, you know, a, a hat sound. Um, So as I adjust this value module, every other beat is pushed off the grid. Um, we can get pretty extreme with it. Right, we get that sort of galloping, bouncy feel. And that's probably more like a traditional swing. So that's the demonstration. Uh, I'm going to turn this off because it's kind of obnoxious to listen to, I think, while I speak. So what I have here um, is a LFO, right? Your, your normal LFO, uh, tap controlled. Um, just so I can use this stomp switch to uh, change the, the speed of the LFO. Uh, it has a swing. The swing amount has been turned on in the options. Um, and I've set the phase to negative 180 degrees. I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, but this goes into a comparator. Um, it goes into the negative input of the comparator and what that does is it inverts the LFO. So it would be normal, I think, to think, oh, I want to swing an LFO, I'll affect its swing control. But the swing amount controls the duty cycle of the LFO. So that means it controls, if our LFO starts here, how long it goes before it drops to zero. It controls the length of the LFO's cycle. But what we want is something that controls not the end point of an LFO, but the beginning point. So we can move that up and off the grid for our swing amount, um, which is why we need to invert it. When we invert it on, on the comparator, uh, what happens is, is that swing amount isn't applied to the end of the LFO cycle. It's applied to the beginning of the LFO cycle. And that's pretty much the breakthrough I had to have uh, to figure out the rest. Because once you have that down, the rest of it falls into place, I think. So what we do is we take a flip-flop. Flip-flop goes high every other time that the LFO cycles. So, you know, the LFO's on and then the LFO and the flip-flop are on. LFO, flip-flop, and LFO. So you get a division by two, which allows you to affect every other beat of the LFO. Um, I've tried this before with phase input and that sort of thing, and that doesn't really work because the, the phase input swings around um, in ways that, that weren't helpful. But when we affect the length of this LFO, the beginning point of the LFO is steady. It stays the same, which doesn't happen with the when you affect the, the phase position of the LFO. And that's what we want. We want a steady beat, but what we want to do is move the beginning point of that steady beat. So we take this flip-flop and we put it through a multiplier, 
And then we use a negative one to one value module. Uh, and this is connected, either I connected, yeah, I connected it here at 50%. You could connect the output of the, the multiplier uh, to the swing amount at 50%, but somewhere there needs to be a 50% connection because what we want to do is keep the range of our value module within the range of the duty cycle. So if we connect this at 100%, um, the ranges won't match up because once we get to, to 0 .5, negative 0 0.500 on this, the duty cycle or the swing amount will be at negative 100. The swing amount goes from negative 100 to positive 100. When it's at negative 100, we have the longest duty cycle and the LFO is essentially on at all times. And when it's at positive 100, we have the shortest duty cycle. The LFO is uh, <coughs> off at all times. So the effect of this is that as we change the swing amount on every other step, which the uh, flip-flop lets us know when every other step occurs, we get uh, a duty cycle that is either 50%, which is on the grid, or it's longer than 50% which in our inverted version means that it, whoa, sorry about that. In our inversion, inverted version, it means it starts later, right? It moves further off the grid. So let me connect this again. We've got this value module, right? And as we adjust this, every other time our swing amount goes to a certain amount and we can see, let me slow this down, right? Maybe a little bit hard to see on the display, but one of the high cycles is shorter than the other. And if you look, it starts later. The end point is consistent between all of them, but the start point is different. Now, because we have a negative one-to-one -one value module, we can also do an interesting trick that not every swing control offers. We can apply positive swing, which pushes uh, the offbeat ahead of the, the grid, ahead of the clock, um, which is a nice perk of, of using this configuration. We can do some more exotic swing uh, approaches. Now I'm gonna come back to this uh, phase amount. The reason why it's at negative 180 degrees is because if you're working with an external clock, then by inverting this in the comparator, what we've done is we've changed the phase position of the LFO so that it starts at a different point than where our, our clock says on is. It, it starts 50% later in the, the beat cycle. So the negative 180 degrees allows us to sync our uh, swung LFO or our swung comparator back onto the clock grid. And this comes in handy if we want to swing one part of a rhythm but not the other, which is I hope you can hear that it's pretty low. What I've done is just used an LFO that's clocked by the same tap tempo uh, into a very basic, you know, this is an oscillator going into a resonant filter going into a VCA uh, controlled by its, its own uh, decay envelope. So we can move our swing amount Right? You can also move it into the positive and have the hat precede the, the bass beat. And that's the basic idea. You can use uh, an LFO and invert it with a comparator 
by placing it in the negative position of the comparator. Then use a flip-flop to determine every other time the LFO cycles. And then with a, a value module and a, a multiplier, every other time it cycles, it'll cycle to a different um, duty cycle and be pushed off the grid, positively or negatively. You know, and when you get into the really extreme shuffles uh, or swung beats, you know, it sounds almost broken. But a little bit goes a long way toward creating a rhythm that interacts interestingly with the... Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the bass beat. Um, and, you know, you could put a clock divider in here and have this as a much faster hat rhythm that still had a swing compared to, um, you know, the, the bass drum. This isn't the best example for a, a counterpoint because we want our hats to be faster than our, our bass drum generally. Uh, I did add one other thing because I thought it would be interesting. Um, what this is, is a flip-flop that is connected to the first flip-flop. And it goes through uh, its own multiplier with its own value module. And when we turn it on, what we can do is apply a different swing to the two and the four beats by applying uh, swing to the to the fourth beat uh, when this multiplier is on, which I have set up with a stomp switch. which is just a, another interesting level of rhythmic variety you can have. You could have positive swing on one beat and negative swing on the other. Um, so that's swung rhythms, um, which have sort of baffled me for, for a long time. I know other people have asked about them and I've given some, now I realize, quite bad advice. Uh, but this system seems to work really well for creating a swung rhythm. Um, so I hope that's useful to any of you who are working on, you know, sequencing or building drum machines or, or whatnot. Um, and uh, I've added this to the tips and tricks. So if you want to look at the schematic for that, uh, go there. You should be able to find it under LFOs. Have a good evening, morning.